This pack contains one whole haggis in a skin in a tin. In a skin in a tin. I associate this with two things. Um, Christmas and on French. And both of which make me very happy. So, yeah. It remains as richly warming and comforting as ever. So relax, unwind, and take a moment with Horlicks at any time of the day. This is Jen ASMR unboxing. Subscribe before you fall asleep. Hi there, my love sleepy squirrels. I hope that you are all well. This evening I have a fun food haul for you guys. It is a British corner shop haul. So I am Scottish um, but I have been living in France for the last mm, like 15 years. <laughs> almost 15 years now, so every now and again I am lucky enough to have a lovely friend um, to send me a few things over, or my mother, or um, that kind of thing, and in between I like to go on to British Corner Shop um, it's just like an online shop that sends out British items, some American things I think too, but mostly like based on British things, um, to other places in Europe. I don't know if they like send to America or something, but definitely send to France. So yeah, this first item is a vegetarian haggis. I love haggis. Um, and I love vegetarian haggis too. I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan, but I am almost, I would say I'm pretty much a vegetarian without like actually being one. Like I'm not averse to like eating some meat, like some chicken, fish and stuff like that, but I tend to avoid it in general. But the vegetarian haggis was just because it was the only one available on the site and it kind of keeps better and sometimes I think it tastes better to be honest. So this one is a Stali Quality Foods vegetarian haggis. Traditional haggis in a skin made with the finest ingredients. If you don't know what haggis is, basically it's a traditional Scottish dish um, and it's like in a sheep's stomach and they like mix together like oats and spices and all the parts of the meat I guess that you wouldn't generally eat in other ways. Yum yum. Um, kind of like, I'm sure there's a lot of different traditional dishes that are similar in different countries um, but I guess it's the Scottish version of this type of thing. And to be honest, yeah, like I said, I kind of prefer the, the vegetarian one. It's, um, it can be quite spicy, like there are certain like different levels of spiciness to them. But they mostly taste quite similar. So I would have um, this with um, neeps and tatties, so that would be like potatoes and turnips or you can go for carrots or whatnot, parsnips, that sort of thing and usually it would be like in a puree form with it. I will eat haggis um, maybe like once or twice a year, not like like it's not like a weekend thing, like a Sunday roast kind of thing. It's not as ingrained in our culture as that. Although you can't get it in a chippy. It's pretty good too. So yeah, I would, um, since I've been in France, I would generally eat it like once or twice a year, sometimes to share with people. Um, just as like a cultural thing or just as a family, just 
Although this looks very fancy in this little cardboard packaging, it is actually just a tin inside. <laughs> you can see. I don't know, right? Maybe the side a little first. So, ingredients. Well, let's get to get the ingredients of the vegetarian packet. So, we have oatmeal, is the first, onions, water, turnip, a vegetable oil, flake. There's no S there. Visual oil flake. Okay. Kidney beans, lentils, red in brackets, mushrooms, salt, and pepper. And that is everything. Then we have like allergy information about oatmeal, um, storage instructions. This pack contains one whole haggis in a skin in a tin in a skin in a tin. Um, store in a cool, dry place. Open, once opened, store in refrigerator and use within 24 hours. Heating instructions. Product may be simmered, microwaved, or oven baked. See can for detailed heating instructions. And synthetic skin is not edible. Okay, so it's obviously not a sheep's stomach if it is a vegetarian be avoiding that. Okay, let me just open this up. Our lovely bit of tartan there. and German um, bit there. You can go onto the website and get all the, the information you need. Okay. So, produced in Scotland for Stali Quality Foods, Glenroths, Scotland. Thehaggis.com It's funny, um, if you ever go to Glasgow, I would definitely suggest going to Kelvin Grove. It's like an art, um, art museum. And <laughs> there's like, um, a, like a nature part, you know, like a natural history part of the museum. Um, and where all the animals are and stuff, there's like a little haggis. It's so funny. Obviously, the haggis is not an animal, um, but a lot of tourists do kind of think that it is an animal. So it's fun that they put that in the Natural History Museum part. It's very, very cute. <laughs> I like to tell the children that the haggis is um, an animal. Not when we're eating it, but you know, in general. It's funny. Okay, so I have another few like savory items. Let's have a look at them first and then we'll get to the sweet because a lot of sweet stuff. <laughs> it's more the sweet stuff that I miss um, from Scotland. Like, in Scotland, we're not known for our, like, cuisine. It's not, like, um, huge, but, like, the chocolate is different. 
like we don't have really Cadbury's chocolate in um, France like maybe one or two things here and there but like in general we don't have like Galaxy chocolate or Cadbury's and stuff so I do miss that stuff now and then okay let's move on with the other savory items I have some sachets some little packets here um, the first two here are the same and it is Coleman's Full of Flavor Bread Sauce I love bread sauce um, I have memories upon memories of my mum making bread sauce I don't know why I don't think that she made bread sauce more than like anybody else but I don't know why I have this kind of like when I think of my mum cooking I think of her making bread sauce I feel like it's just like the thing she would do just at the very end before plating up so we would already kind of be in the area so I would see her just like whipping up some bread sauce before we ate I think that's why <laughs> I'm not sure but it's a nice memory so it's fine and um, my partner really likes bread sauce too so I got two because I know it will be appreciated and I honestly don't really know what's in it obviously like bread and wheat and stuff yeah wheat flour breadcrumbs onion powder salt sugar yeast extract a bit of nutmeg thyme yeah so I actually make it with non-dairy milk so like soya milk or something and it's pretty nice too there's not like a huge difference um most people in my family like in this me and my partner basically are a little not lactose intolerant but sensitive so we tend to go for like the soy milk and that works pretty nice for bread sauce if anybody's wondering I don't know what you would call bread sauce like it's not the same as like white sauce like you would put with fish or something like that it's really not um it's not like bechamel in uh, France or anything it's really its own specific thing so I can't get that here I could probably make it from scratch but yeah um, no <laughs> I'm not like I like it a lot but I don't know it might take a long time to do it okay and this last little sachet is I just added this in because it wasn't expensive and it sounded delicious and I'm sure I could probably find something similar in France but I was shopping I was liking it. So flavor it sweet chili marinade seasoning and I just thought that would be lovely and you could just like use it with like fish or chicken or whatnot. Four servings made in the UK suitable for vegetarians. So sugar, starch, salt, spices, onion, dried tomato, etc, etc. Yeah, it's nothing special, but I don't know. I just saw it and I thought, oh, yum. So I grabbed it. But the kind of like sweet and savory together is not like super huge in France. Um, it's not one of the like prominent flavors whereas in the UK it is so I guess you could find this in France or make it yourself but I don't know it's definitely more of a thing in the UK talking of sweet and savory um, the next thing is very sweet and savory and they are well bubble wrap protected is good because they're in glass jars so this is actually something I used to get in squeezy bottles on Amazon I would get like six at a time um, because I love this stuff and they stopped selling it on Amazon and I was so sad if I'd known I would have like stocked up um, I can basically eat just like plain pasta with a, like a bit of this 
mix through it and that's just like, I'm done, it's good, I don't need anything else, it's perfect. safety button can be pushed down. So that means it's already been opened or it's no longer um, airtight and secure. Okay, let me remove the second layer of packaging. So here they are. I definitely appreciate how they were packed because glass jars in a big package like that would just be very easily So yeah, I lost a little touch of the label here with the tape, but no matter. I'm just like super happy <laughs> to see this. So Sharwoods is like, um, I associate that with like Indian food um, and being in the UK basically, curries and stuff. And mango chutney is just like, for me, it's like the perfect thing to go with anything. I love it. Love, love, love it. Um, let me see if we have... Okay, so ready to eat straight from the jar, our classic mango chutney goes down a treat with curries and it's perfect with poppadoms and naan bread too. Simply pour into a bowl and you're ready to dip in. So yeah, it works like that too. As a dipping sort of sauce sort of thing. I haven't had a poppadom in a long time. They don't seem to have them here in France. And naan bread, they kind of do sometimes, but it's more like pizza bread rather than naan. Okay, ingredients. <laughs> Sugar is the first ingredient. Mm. Mangoes, 45%. Salt acid and spices may contain sesame. That's fine with me. Yeah. So yeah, pretty nice. I'm really happy. I'm gonna be super happy for the next few months with my pasta. <laughs> I really have difficulty finding things to go in my pasta because I really don't like general, just like classic tomato based sauces. I mean, I'm fine every now and again, but I just can't, like, long-term. I just get so sick of it so quickly. And then pesto I like, but then the jars, you have to use it in a certain time. And I get sick of it really easily, like, two or three times in the week. And I'm like, okay, I don't want pesto for another few weeks at least. The stuff I could eat with a spoon. <laughs> Why a spoon, Saya? Because it'll hurt more. <laughs> Can anyone tell me what that is from? What film that is from? And there's actually a little <laughs> hint here. Not Shar Woods, but Moon mm Woods. Okay, if anybody gets that, please write in the comments. It's like a huge thing in my childhood, that film. Okay, so let's move on to some other savory items. So this next item is a big bag of Twiglets. I love Twiglets. So these are, um, how do you say, like Marmite kind of flavor crisps. And they're like little, little twigs. <laughs> And I really like them because the flavoring is so high, like so intense, that you can't eat a lot of them. Well, I can't eat a lot of them, so 
this bag will last me like a long time. Just like dip in for like five and then close it back up. And I really like just having that like intense flavor for a little minute and then get about it. Sometimes when crisps and that sort of thing are not like high flavored, you just eat and eat and eat and saltiness and, and I just You guys have twiglets where you're from? I don't know where they're available in the world. They're not available in France. I do know that. So here on the back, a totally original, entertain your senses. Only twiglets give you that distinctive, knobbly shape, combined with a zingy taste and crunchy bite for all-round sensual satisfaction. Crunchy, savory, whole wheat sticks. <laughs> All in the way we make it, we bake it for a light and crunchy bite. Yeah, they're not like fried. Whole wheat flour, they're 80% whole wheat flour. That's cool. Vegetable oils, um, sunflower and palm. Uh, flavoring. Yeast extract, barley, salt, vegetable extract, carrot, okay, salt, etc. So yeah, I just noticed on a few of the things um, for allergens, including cereals containing gluten, see ingredients in bold. I've noticed that in all the ingredients, anything that is in bold is something that you could be allergic to like something that is something that a lot of people are allergic to like a regular common there we go, that's the word I'm looking for a common allergen that's quite cool, it must be a thing in the UK I haven't seen that in France it's a cool idea okay, I have two more packs of crisps so I got some Walker's Squares I remember these from when I was a kid I loved them, I'm hoping my kids will love them too so we have two salt and vinegar, two ready salted, and two cheese and onion. Um, salt and vinegar is starting to be quite popular in France now, like a few years ago. Like five years ago, you wouldn't have really seen salt and vinegar as a flavor. Um, but now it is. Like cheese and onion, yes. Salted, yes, of course. But salt and vinegar was not really seen as like a normal flavor before. It was like exotic flavored or English flavor cocktail is still not a flavor in France though. So yeah, these little crispy squares, these are definitely um, fried though. <laughs> They're not like um, oven baked and whatnot. They're really like just like crisps. They're fun. Who is it that does, that used to do the adverts for walkers? Was it Gary Lineker? Was that Walker's? I'm getting like mixes of nostalgia and like things like that when when I see these kind of things, you know, like just like the brand Walker's just makes me think of was it Gary Lineker that did the crisps? He did the crisps adverts, but like was it Walker's or was it another brand? I can't place it, it's like a blurry memory <laughs> Any of you British uh, listeners, viewers, whatnot, um, that are not asleep yet, can you tell me, was it Carrie Lineker that was advertising for walkers or not? And of course, I got hula hoops. <laughs> so the hula hoops are crisps also. Um, two salt and vinegar, two original, which is basically ready salted and two cheese and onion, so classic flavours and they're like little hoop crisps I've seen them like once or twice in France not in bags like this but like in little boxes or little tubes or whatnot as like a more fancy snack or something but yeah, hoops, classic 
And just remember putting them on all your fingers and, you know, having them as rings <laughs> and then eating them, crunching your rings. It's a lot of fun. So I'm hoping my kids will have a lot of fun with these. Um, I think, yeah, the twiglets are pretty much for me. Like, obviously the kids can taste them. I don't, don't like them. Although my son does like strong flavors, he might like them. But the squares and the hula hoops are kind of for the kids. I mean, I will have a few just for nostalgia's sake, but they're kind of for the kids. I can't wait to see my kids, like, playing around with hula hoops and just, like, the nostalgia of it. It's cute. Okay, so that's all the crisps I got. Um, is that the end of all the savory stuff? It might be. It wasn't the end. <laughs> I still have These are Orkney Thin Oat Cakes. So they're not cakes as in like a sweet cake, like a birthday cake kind of thing. They are just like biscuits. They're savory biscuits made with oats. Traditional whole grain oat cakes baked in Orkney. And they're Stockens. The Old Man of Hoy. are thin ones. I like the thicker ones, but I thought, well, I'll just get these because they'll be more in the pack and they could be easier to share sort of thing. If you've never had oat cakes, I would definitely recommend oat cakes. You can just like eat them by themselves. Like you can eat them like with dips and like with tuna and stuff like that. Like if you make some tuna mayonnaise with tomatoes and stuff, you can just like dip them in and eat like that. Or you can have like cheese and crackers, you know, like just with some butter with some cheese on top or something. But like something I like doing with oat cakes is totally gross. I excuse me before I say it, but I like to just eat them by themselves. Well, it's not really that gross, but it kind of is. Sounds gross. I just eat it by itself, but I just really take my time to savor the texture and the flavor. Sounds weird, but like it's almost like it's a paste in my mouth before I eat it. I just really take my time. I really, I don't know why, but um, I guess it's a texture thing, like a senses thing for me. Yeah. Orkney is a Scottish island, by the way, if you're not familiar. Okay, so that definitely is the end of the savoury. Let's do the drinks now. I have some malty goodness. <laughs> we have some Horlicks. Oh, it actually says malty goodness on it. <laughs> so yeah, Horlicks. Take a moment. Original hot malty goodness just add milk and with this you can also add like any type of milk you want you still get the flavor of the malt sort of thing high in calcium zinc and vitamin c d and b12 i don't know if malty drinks are very popular in other countries i don't think i've really noticed that here maybe i just haven't really looked um, I don't know. Let's see what we have written about this back here. So yeah, it's 41% wheat flour and malted wheat in your drink, yeah. So Harlick's deliciously creamy malty taste is traditionally crafted using malted wheat and barley enriched with vitamins and minerals. First developed by brothers William and James Horlicks since 189, no, 1873, Horlicks has supported explorers on the way to both poles, nourished soldiers through two world wars, and fortified athletes in the Olympics. In the hectic rush of modern life, it remains as richly warming and comforting as ever. 
So relax, unwind, and take a moment with Horlicks at any time of the day. Yeah, there's not like caffeine in it, so you can have it in the evening as a malty kind of cozy treat. That's how I would personally use it, but yeah, look at this coming in from a nice walk in the winter. Instead of having like a hot chocolate, you can go for some, like a Horlicks. It's so good. So, so good. Or like in the morning. This is actually how I'm probably going to use it in the morning, in the winter. If I wake up super early, like 6 in the morning or something, before the kids start moving around and, you know, before life starts going. Um, if I'm not filming the night before, of course, because, yeah, <laughs> I need some sleep. Um, I'll just sit at my computer with a cup of Horlicks and just like start my day super slow with maybe like some ASMR in the background and then just like slowly going through my emails and you know just like checking the daily things, what the weather's going to be like, what my day, like what the plan is for the day, that sort of thing. Okay, and I grabbed another thing that is quite similar, but a little more treat-like. Ovaltine, which is pretty much the same as Horlicks, let's face it. Um, just add water, nutritiously delicious chocolate light. And it is also a kind of malty drink. Here we go. Simply add hot water and enjoy a deliciously soothing chocolatey drink as you unwind any time of the day. Made with the wholesome goodness of barley, malt and cocoa, Ovaltine's unique recipe contains essential vitamins and minerals. So yeah, it's basically the same thing, but like chocolatey. I mean, Ovaltine comes in non-chocolatey versions too, but... I don't know, it was just a selection that they had on the site that made me choose in this way. But the Ovaltine does have milk, so it's like powdered milk. Um, let me see ingredients. Oh, milk. <laughs> um, per meat powder, then it's barley, malt extract, condensed milk, sugar, etc. So, yeah, this um, has coconut oil and rapeseed oil, magnesium, skimmed milk powder, so they have, this has milk, um, so I wouldn't drink like more than one cup of this in a day, <laughs> or I might have a sore stomach, but I find that the um, milk in the UK doesn't give me as bad of like a sore stomach as the French milk would. I don't know if that's like just because I was brought up on British milk or maybe that's just something I noticed in France as I got older. So maybe now I'll try this kind of stuff and I'll be like, oh no, it's the same. But it's an impression I have. I don't know if it's, if it's really that or not, but I'll try. So yeah. I was using the one um, that Amanda sent me at Christmas up until like a few weeks ago. I like drank the last cup. Um, it's not exactly the same as this, but it's a similar kind of chocolatey drink. And I was really sad. <laughs> so I'm happy to have my next one. Yes. Okay, so um, that's the drinks done, the savory stuff. Let's move on to the treats. The treat section. My favourite section. Uh, Mr. Kipling. Exceedingly good cakes. <laughs> That's still like their, their go-to thing. Still their tagline. Exceedingly good cakes. So these are little cherry bake wells. This is probably my favourite. Um, little baked good, like my go-to. They are amazing. <laughs> amazing. You have like the goodness of the, like the pastry is like buttery 
and kind of melts. You have like the icing, you have the little cherry on top, and then you have like, um, like a marzipan sort of thing, or is it more like almond paste or something? Something along those lines and a bit of like jam, I guess. But oh my goodness, I don't know what it is, but the mixture of all that together is divine <laughs> to me. Um, yeah, nation's favourite. I'm not surprised. Classic. Classic. Baked good there. So, Mr. Kipling. Is Mr. Kipling's, like, um, as popular it was, like, as it was when I was a kid? Is it, like, the go-to thing still? I don't know. I can't wait. I might have one of these tonight. It's already, like, 11 something? What time is it? Yeah, it's just past 11 and I still have a few videos to film and it's the kids' second day of school tomorrow so I need to be ready in the morning. Their first day went pretty good. Okay, let me grab something else to show you. This next item is another total classic for anyone living in the UK, a Terry's chocolate orange. You guys take this for granted. This doesn't exist elsewhere, <laughs> this kind of thing. Um, I associate this with two things, um, Christmas and Dawn French, and both of which make me very happy. So yeah, Terry's chocolate orange. This is a dark chocolate one, which I don't think was available when I was a kid. I think it was always milk chocolate. So basically it is a ball of chocolate. <laughs> it's like a little orange and you can smash the top of it and when it opens it never does like that. But um, they're all little segments. It's made up of lots of little, little segments of chocolate that look like little orange segments with little bits on them. Made with real orange oil. It tastes super good. Um, yeah, so this, I got a dark one just because I prefer dark chocolate in general, like when I'm having like a sweet treat. Because it is like a stronger taste as with like the crisps. I prefer something that is like I'm gonna eat like a small amount but has like high impact flavor rather than something that is like moreish that you could eat just like loads of it and then it's just like I'm disappointed in myself after, you know? That sort of thing. And I'm like I'm not super young anymore, you know, I've got two kids. I need to get out more, I need to do more exercise, I need to watch my weight more and yeah, hopefully <laughs> hopefully this kind of idea will work I'm hoping it will work I'm not obsessed with weight but I'm just like, okay, you know, my metabolism isn't working as much as it did when I was in my 20s let's calm it down a little <laughs> okay, so let's have a look Oh, some fudge. I just grabbed a bag of M&S, so Marks and Spencers, clotted cream fudge using Cornish clotted cream and cooked in traditional copper kettles. Doesn't that sound so fancy? So yeah, it's just some fudge. So I was thinking I would have one or two of these, but I think maybe like when I have people when it's like time to bring out the tea, I might pop these in a little bowl. It'd be nice. Again, something you can't really eat a lot of because it's a very intense, like sugary treat, you know. Be nice. Do you guys like fudge? I absolutely love fudge, and my favorite is like Scottish tablet is kind of fudge but kind of not. I don't know if you you know what it is. It's more like of a drier consistency and it is something that melts in your mouth like no other. Um, 
tablet, Scottish tablet. It's amazing. Um, I used to work in Stirling for like a year, maybe like two years. And one of my colleagues' wives made homemade tablet every year. And I was just like, yes, please. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> so good. So yeah, I got a little bag of fudge. I think you can probably get fudge in France, but I would have to like test different fudges out and different like things out to find something that was similar. But I had a little look in the moo free section, so dairy free section of the website and found a whole bunch of vegan chocolate to try out because I love chocolate but I would like to not have a sore stomach if I eat too much of it, you know, like I don't want to eat too much of it but sometimes it happens, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I thought I would try a few of the things out. Two of, oh, three of the things that I, I actually got are Easter things, so hopefully the dates are okay. Yeah, November. This will be gone before November. So, Moo Free. Hold on, I'll pop this to the side and let's have a look at the Easter egg first. So we have a Moo Free Chalky Explosion, Explosion, to A, jeez, Easter Egg for Dairy Dodging Chalky Chompers. 100% <laughs> vegan, made using 100% recycled plastic. That is so cute, isn't it? Everything about it is really cute. Like the illustrations, moo free. I'm really happy about it. What does it say? A chalk packed party of milk free mayhem. Moo free is for everyone, bringing chocolatey togetherness with every delicious dairy dodging bite. I'm loving the um, the design and like the strategy, like. How would you say it? Like the advertising around this? Like the way they're talking about it and stuff. Oh, there's a little story on the side. That's so cute. <laughs> the Easter Explosion. One Easter, Pierre the Hedgehog and Georgie the Giraffe. There's Pierre the Hedgehog. There's Georgie. Oh, shout out to Georgie, my patron. Hey, Georgie. Hope you're well. You're the only person I know that's called Georgie. George the Giraffe discover a mystical marshmallow volcano. As they bound towards it, who should whisk past in his hot air balloon but Abner the Adventurer and his pal Dixie the Dinosaur. Oh, here they are. Just put the on there. Suddenly, the volcano erupts, covering the surrounding plants in a magical elixir which turns them into delicious marshmallows. The friends combine the marshmallows with Moo Free's white and original chalky, creating an amazing Easter chalky explosion. That is really cute. Can you see um, the kind of squished up explosion that's happening on the front of this Easter egg? You can see the kind of marshmallow shaped and chocolate drop shaped kind of thing there. Okay, so Moo Free is, this is not like an ad for Moo Free, I'm just really interested. <laughs> Moo Free is an ethical family business whose team includes several amazing people with autism. Okay, I just like it more and more. We purchase cocoa from Rainforest Alliance Certified Farms to support sustainable farming. Cocoa Easter egg with white cocoa drops and vegan marshmallows. So cute. No dairy, no gluten, no soya, no palm oil, and it is, of course, vegan. 
I'm in love with this brand. Hold on, I have another thing from them. Also Easter. <laughs> so Moo Free White Chalky Eggs for Dairy Dodging Chalky Chompers. I think we're really gonna enjoy eating this and we better be quick because we've only got like a month or two. I also have this cute little bunny. M&S food made without dairy, a bunny bar. It's just a little chocolate bunny. I'm thinking like after school snack, that sort of thing, just as a little treat. And then this one is a Cadbury plant bar made with almonds, smooth chocolate. This sounds cool. I was, the Easter stuff and the bunny and everything, I was thinking more for the kids and this one I was thinking more for me. This sounds amazing. Cocoa life helps farmers get the most from cocoa trees. Da, da, da. Plant-based packaging too. That's cool. Almond paste. Okay, so it's like chocolate with almond paste, sugar, cocoa butter, almond paste, cocoa mass, rice extract, emulsifier, flavorings. <laughs> it's like a vegan thing. It's vegan, plant bar, and then on the back it says may contain milk. <laughs> Sesame, other nuts, or wheat. Yeah, it may contain milk, this plant bar, but no. I get what they mean, it's like, they may be in the same factory or something. But yeah, I'm excited about this. So I would say that that was all the reasonable stuff that I got. And the last part, I have to admit, is just like, I just want to eat it. <laughs> it's just like, chocolate from my childhood, just like something to grab with a cup of tea, that sort of thing, just like the kid in me was like, let's get it. Let's go for the Galaxy first. So Galaxy Chocolate is like one of the other big brands of chocolate in the UK. Um, for me, like Cadbury's is obviously the first, first level. And then you have Galaxy and then lots of others and stuff. But Galaxy is like almost on the same level as Capri, I would say. Maybe in the last 15 years it's changed. <laughs> I don't know, but like that's the impression I get is still the case. But. So we have Galaxy Ripple. Um, Galaxy Chocolate is just like a little smoother, I would say. I'm trying to think like what the difference would be. It's more, it's smoother. It, it kind of melts more in the mouth. But I don't really have a preference for either one. Um, I don't know which one I would prefer. Depends. So, Galaxy Ripple is basically the same as a twirl. <laughs> and quite similar to a flake, but more like a twirl is here. So, Cadbury Twirl. You can see in the picture roughly what it looks like. So, it's a bar and when you bite into it, like inside there's like a, a bunch of like ripple layers in there kind of see it here is more of like a, a representation of what it kind of is. It's not, obviously not a picture and that's like more of a picture of what it looks like for both I would say. So I have these Cadbury ones which there are already two I've eaten and then this pack of Galaxy Ripples. Um, these are a lot smaller and these ones are quite full-sized. I don't remember like price-wise what the difference was or I have Galaxy Smooth Caramel, which you might actually recognize from like celebrations and stuff like that. So it's just like a bar of them. And the last one, Smooth Orange. I've never had this. <laughs> I just saw it and I was like, oh, it's new. Like, so there's no way I would have known. Um, 
yeah, I thought it would be nice to try smooth orange um, it doesn't look like it's like a filling it looks like it's solid orange chocolate do you see? has anyone tried this before? is it just solid? because here you have like the this you can see like the orange is there and that's the caramel and this has like caramel coming out of it and the orange one doesn't have that so I'm guessing it's solid so it's going to be kind of like the Terry's chocolate orange but milk chocolate I guess yeah and smoother <laughs> probably smooth orange smooth caramel ripple it all sounds very like grown up and very like I think that's more the brand for Galaxy. It's more like a grown-up chocolate, and then a Cadbury's is just like, yay, let's go. You know, ripple. It's like a ripple in the water. Very poetic. This one's just like twirl, like a kid twirling. You know, same thing, but you know, for different people, I guess. And then I have also cream cheese, <laughs> which is also a kind of kids chocolate kind of thing. It? It's like honeycomb, um, crunchy thing covered in chocolate. Get that Friday feeling, yeah. Yeah. Some of these have been eaten also by some little people and some big people. I do like it. I do like to team chocolate with like a tea um, because it just makes it more nice and cozy and I couldn't leave the website without getting some Aero chocolate <laughs> so Nestle um, is like a brand that you have in, in France but not really so much for sweets and stuff um, more like other types of products food and stuff like that too. I've never seen an arrow bar here. Feel the bubbles melt. Delightful peppermint. It's gonna be nice. Do you guys like mint chocolate? It's getting more and more popular I think. Oh this one. Oh. This one I was excited about when I saw this. A Cadbury caramel golden caramel chocolate. What does this remind you of? If um, you grew up in the UK, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, what this is reminding me of. Because I got one too. <laughs> I wanted to taste test them against each other because I'm so sure that this is just a caramel. Caramel, caramel, caramel chocolate. Yes. I think this is just Cadbury getting in on the caramel business there. <laughs> I want to taste test them and see which one is better. Even if this one tastes better, this one will probably win for me just for like nostalgia steak. I think it's gonna always like be a winner for me. But yeah, so that is the last of the indulgent treats I have to show you guys. Um, to give you an idea of how fast we go through this kind of stuff, uh, the last time I got things like this um, was at Christmas last year. Um, there is a video, I'll link it obviously down below. Um, I got a lovely care package from Amanda. Hey Amanda, be well. Love, love. Um, and it's gone. <laughs> so, as I said, that uh, I had my last cup of the chocolatey uh, drink like a few weeks ago. Um, and I think the chocolate and treats and things like that have been gone for like a month or two. So this will keep us going for a little while. But yeah really happy that British Corner Shop exists. It's a lot more expensive. Like if I went into Asda's and got all this stuff, it would cost like a third of the price, but obviously you're paying for 
the availability, um, the fact that they go and, you know, they go and get the stuff and make it available to you and the shipping and all that kind of stuff. I really enjoy it. So yeah, if you want to try any of this kind of stuff and you're not from the UK, you should check it out. It's definitely worth it. It's not like extortionate prices. I mean, it is expensive compared to like the normal price, but there's a reason for it. It's not just like trying to take your money. It's a good price for what it is. Okay, so I am going to leave this video here for this evening. This has been a little bit of a long one. I might even get up to an hour. Maybe just under an hour. We'll see. After I edit. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And that you found it relaxing. Maybe a little interesting. To see what I miss from the UK. I hope that every single one of my sleepy squirrels are doing well Wherever you are in the world Whatever's happening around you I hope that you can find your own little bubble of calm For example if you are in Liège, in Belgium, like Lolok. Hey, I hope you're well. I just spent a week in Belgium. I really liked it. And I know where Liège is. <laughs> I was um, just south from where you live. In a little uh, Oulot. Lovely, lovely, lovely.